All can be other and all can be the same. Verse number 38. What is known as many is the other, and that which shines forth as one is sameness. Having known the state which is going to be spoken of and attaining release, remain dissolved remain dissolved and blended in the state of sameness. Commentary. These words are to be understood in a very special way. In the usual Malayalam sense, Nivarnu means a person becoming upright. In Nataraja Guru's commentary, he has taken it in that sense. But I am taking it from the original Sanskrit source. In that, there are two complementary terms, pravritti, the path of action, and nivritti, the path of release. Those who are caught in the path of action get entangled in many action-reaction situations and bondages of karma. One who works out his release from this is called nivritti. I am taking the word nivarnu in this sense, as one who is finding his release. There are various differentiating prejudices in which our mind is caught. Regaining the mind from such bigotry is also to be understood as Nivarnu. A man may believe he is a Christian or a Muslim, that there is no other true religion, and that if you do not find your salvation that way, you are doomed forever. His mind is caught in a certain way of thinking. It may be well and good for him, but it pits so many other people against him, and he cannot share his way of life with them. In this way, we make factions and differentiations, which are the basis of conflict. How we release our minds from such bigotry is what the present verse explores. A special term here is Samyam Elam. Samyam means likeness. Someone may be playing tennis and someone else football. Superficially it looks quite different. But if you look for identity, you can see both are sports and both give entertainment and physical exercise. The mode may look outwardly different Still, there is samya, likeness. Another word to understand is kala. It is a term that comes in yoga and tantra. It is to be understood in the context of two other words, nada and bindu. Nada is the subtle vibration of sound. Our whole body itself has an unbroken sound, which the yogis called anahata. The central locus of your psychophysical life is called Bindu. When you are breathing up and down, it is likened to a mantra, which is said to be equivalent to the articulation of Hamsa, also an unbroken sound going on within you. It can find its own center or Bindu. When you concentrate your consciousness in any of the synergic centers, it is as if consciousness is flowing or streaming centripetally and centrifugally, while keeping that locus as a monitoring force. One may find it in the center between the brows, the heart center, the throat center, or any of the other centers. When a certain interest develops from the center of your being, it enlarges and becomes a whole field of interest. As a function, this aspect of the self is called Kala. If you are looking for differentiation, the Kala will be seeing differences everywhere. If you are looking for unity, then you will find a hundred reasons for seeing all as the same. One has to cultivate the Kala of sameness as a functional reality not just as an idea. When we examine our external tastes, we see that they differ very much. One man's meat is another man's poison, as they say. 
In the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, Jesus says, If you think I have come to bring peace, nay, that's not it. What I have brought is division. In a house of five people, three will be against two. In a house of three people, two will be against one. I have placed a discordance between father and son, between mother and daughter, between the son-in-law and the father-in-law. What's with all this discord? When we think of Jesus, we think of unity. So it's hard to understand this statement. We can find sense in it only when we think that the unifying factor is transcending the pettiness of all relativistic considerations. In this world, everybody is full of relativism and therefore there is no agreement. The agreement can come only when you transcend this and see the Lord or whatever. In the Mahabharata, the children of two brothers became a divided family, a divided home. There, 100 people were pitted against five. The divisions multiplied. Those who were loyal to the five became one group, and those who were loyal to the hundred were another. They decided to fight, and there was a great battle. When Arjuna came to the battlefield wanting to wage war, he was asked to look at his enemies. When he looked around, he was surprised to see his friends on all sides. He couldn't believe he was standing there bearing arms against his own grandfather, his own teacher, his cousins and best friends. He thought, how can I fight these people? How could I go on living after killing my best friends, my close relatives? What is the meaning of life? So on all sides we have discord, division, strife. What Jesus said may seem very cruel but it only acknowledges what is happening in most houses and most families. The husband is against the wife. Children are against both. One year we may find them in great love, saying, God is showering his special mercy upon us. The next year they are at the marriage counselor and then the divorce court. What is all this? It is called Anya. Narayana Guru says that this tendency is seen everywhere, differentiating, separating, breaking away, alienating, rejecting. The rivers of tears that are shed because of this have no end. There is a way out. It is called Sama, cultivating sameness. In the Bhagavad Gita chapter 6, a whole series of verses is given to tell you how to cultivate sameness. First of all, there needs to be a basis for sameness. In the Bible, the basis is to love your Father, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Then what happens? You find that all mankind has the same Father, which makes everyone brothers and sisters. Then we become responsible and committed to each other. We become each other's caretaker. We share and care for each other because we belong to the same Father. The first statement brings a corollary, to love your neighbor as yourself. Sama, sameness comes when you say, as your own self. So the very Jesus who said, I have brought division, also gives the antidote. The absolute nature of all your soul and all your heart means you have no selfish reservation. It is a total consecration. You are giving up completely. Today I was writing to a person who occasionally asks for counseling from me. A very wonderful person, full of love, piety, devotion, and great love for God and for other people. But there is always one spark of doubt in the mind. It is a very tiny spark that snowballs and becomes a big cloud of darkness and confusion. Then for six months, everything turns out to be meaningless and frustrating. My advice was to give up that tiny little doubt and to be without any kind of a reservation, to love totally. When you wholeheartedly give, 
then you receive in full measure. So anyway, in the sixth chapter of the Gita, Krishna says, be established in me, which makes a thing what it is, is its beingness. A thing becomes stable because of its beingness. Know me to be that beingness. Without me, nothing can be, because I am the beingness. After having found it, feel devoted to it. Let your love flow toward it as the one beingness in all, as the one beingness which makes truth truthful, goodness good, beauty beautiful, love endearing. You cultivate this through constant meditation. I am not speaking of meditation as sitting cross-legged with eyes closed or some such. Life itself is a meditation. Everything passing in our life is a theme of meditation. When you say this exists and this does not exist, what enables you to say it is that beingness. That is what we are asked to adore as the one God. It is up to your taste to call it God or the Supreme Principle or the one reality or beingness or what you poetically feel within you as the greatest empathy you can have the sense of beauty you feel as an artist, the great love you feel as a lover. In all these, there is a substantiality of beingness. You sense it in your heart. Then the Gita says to see that as your own central reality. You are constantly saying, I am, I am, I am. What assures you of that I am is the light within you. I am that is just like saying, I am that I am. See it as the absolute in you. Thus, having found beingness as the reality of everything and as your own reality, it is easy to see that the real in you and the real in all other things are the same. This is how you gain the secret of sameness, samyam. It will bring you great serenity, great peace. When you are seeing sameness, but others are not, will you still have peace? Does this work when others do not see it? If your children are restless and they are shouting and running around the house, you just think, well, it's their age. They are young and have a lot of energy. In my childhood, we were all like that also. If I love my children, I should allow them to have their free expression. Let them play. How happy are my children that they are so exuberant. Then you don't feel annoyed. You rejoice that your children are healthy and cheerful, running around and making a lot of noise. So if you think of the others, you are not disturbed. But if you think only of yourself in isolation, it could be very irritating. If the children are not yours but your neighbors, they are even farther outside the small circle you draw around yourself. The anyata comes here. They are not mine. They belong to someone else. The other. If they come running into your house and raising a ruckus, you at once feel hatred. You drive them away. Don't they have their own house to make noise in? Why should they come bother me when I have things to do. You cannot bear them for even five minutes. Your drishti, how you look at it, has changed. When you know that the self in you and the self in others is the same, that knowledge brings maitreyi, compassion. If someone is mentally upset, you don't just tolerate it. You embrace that person and share their feelings in order to help. Cultivation of this compassion brings about fellowship. When your compassion becomes a functional reality, kala, then it is as if you are melting into it. The idea of kalar nirannu in this verse is that you melt into the state of the functional reality of your vision of oneness. Samya melam is when the feeling of oneness is felt from within as an experience of universality. 
You don't see yourself as different from others. Everyone is free to advocate their own religion, their own way of life, eat their own kind of food, and speak their own language. You have taken away all the barriers in your mind. You think it's okay, it's all mine. All the three worlds are mine, and these are my kinsmen. I don't have any sense of differentiation. It has become Maitreyi, true fellowship. You bring about oneness through wisdom, compassion, and fellowship. At this juncture in the Gita, Arjuna says to Krishna, This all sounds very fine, but I have to actually live it. My mind is not under my control. Like a wild wind it comes. Sometimes a ship lying quietly on the seas will be caught by a wind which drags it away and batters it and breaks it to pieces. This is exactly what my mind does to all my decisions and good intentions. I take a good resolve, but like a typhoon, the mind comes and whips it away and wrecks it. What can I do? Krishna agrees. That is so, my dear Arjuna. Mind cannot be forcibly controlled. Sometimes it is like a whirlwind. But don't you see that the mind is not a whirlwind all the time? Your mind may be restless for a little while. It may smoke and fume. But after some time it calms down. And when it does, you have access to it. That is the time to show it the right way. When the mind is sitting calmly, show it. There is no need to boil. Your true nature is divine. And everything is a manifestation of the divine. Don't feel agitated. Deep down, the mind understands. The next time it raves, somewhere it will know that this is not the right thing to do and it will settle down faster than the previous time. In this way, Krishna shows how to gently tame your mind by detaching yourself from the things with which you are infatuated. Also by continuous abhyasa, continuous practice, you can make it learn to love everything as aspects of the one being or the One Supreme. How by maintaining vairagya, detachment, and doing abhyasa continuously, you will one day be able to make your mind fully in harmony with your vision of oneness. The meditation of this verse is to watch for the many tendencies to close down or become narrow in your vision. Instead, enlarge your boundaries and thus find your nivriti release. Only then will the functional reality of seeing oneness become a persistent way of life. And the free translation of verse 38 is, What is known distinctively as separate and specific entities is the other. What shines forth as the indivisible whole is sameness. This is going to be elucidated hereafter. Having known these states, verticalized knowledge and learn the art of unifying consciousness in the inclusivity of sameness.